Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to take a quick break from the usual discussion and go into some theory crafting. If you're new to my channel, one of the things I love doing in my spare time is think about the what if scenarios. What if the game was different this way? What if we added this item? Or what if we changed this mechanic? So I thought it would be fun to make a video listing the 10 things I personally think would be a welcome addition to League of Legends. If in some alternate universe I own 51% of Riot games and can make all the executive decisions. First thing I would do is bring back all chat and remove team chat. Okay, no seriously though, before we get into it, I want to remind you that this is first and foremost my opinion. Please do not take these choices at face value because it's all in good fun. Besides, I doubt they'll ever happen anyway, so I don't see any reason to get into arguments in the comments about this. Secondly, the perspective I'm coming from is that of overall game improvement, adding in things that I think can enhance the experience of all players, regardless of rank, and removing or changing things that are negatively impacting the game. So let's get started in no particular order. Number 1, Alternative Win Conditions. I brought this up a few times in other videos that one of the reasons why games feel like such coin flips is because whichever team acquires a greater combat advantage early on pretty much wins, as the only way to get back into the game is to fight back. Split pushing is much harder to pull off because of how quickly champions are able to traverse the map through their built-in mobility and natural tempo, as well as the increased importance and lower difficulty of taking neutral objectives like Dragon and Baron. Options like hunkering down and farming to late game is not possible anymore because Dragon Soul and by extension Elder Dragon effectively serve as hard caps on game time. I don't think I've ever seen a team survive a siege against an enemy team with any of the four Dragon Souls, Elder Dragon, and Baron combined. We're also incentivized to fight as much as possible whenever possible. Junglers want to fight over Scuttle Crab, laners want to kill each other so they can get tower plates. Any laner or jungler who power farms in this day and age might as well be win trading. Granted, League of Legends at its core is a very simple game. Simple mechanics, simple objectives, and simple gameplay. The metagame is extremely complex, but the game itself is very simple. So it's definitely harder to design alternative win conditions for Summoner's Rift that would maintain the current experience of the game, but be viable enough for teams to have to be aware of. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything other than split pushing or turtling, so if you guys can think of something we can add to the existing rift, let me know. There is one idea I had in mind though, which is what we're going to talk about next. Number 2. Nexus Blitz Style Objectives. I'm being dead serious about this. Please hear me out, this is not a troll video. No, I am not saying League of Legends should turn into Mario Party, but I feel like at a certain point in time during a game, there should be a challenge or mini game that appears which can give the losing team a way back into the match. I guess for the sake of argument we could say at 20 minutes. Those of you who've never played Nexus Splits, it's basically a condensed version of Summoner's Rift, and in that game mode there would be events that happen every 3 minutes or so where a certain objective needs to be completed, and the team that completes that objective first will win a random buff, ranging from a catapult just like the one we have in Earth, to a Poro King which is a big siege mob similar to Rift Herald, temporary guardian angels, temporary shields, etc. The minigames would range anywhere from things like death matches to goodie bag hunts to prize fights, scuttle racing, king of the hill, and so on. You might be asking me, why the hell would I even think adding any of these would be a good idea? Let me explain. One minigame I think would be genuinely cool to add into Summoner's Rift would be king of the hill. How it works in Nexus Splits is that a control point appears in a random location on the map, with the spawn position slightly favoring the losing team. Standing uncontested in the area will generate the team's capture progress, and whichever team can maintain more control over a period of time wins. Key point, the spawn position favors the losing team, meaning it spawns in their jungle or closer to their base. Again, I would like to repeat my disclaimer this is purely theory crafting and for fun. If the losing team can put up a decent enough fight to win control over that point, they can receive a reward that might give them a way back in. After all, temporary guardian angels or a temporary dragon soul might just help you turn around a 6-8k gold deficit, but if the enemy team manages to secure it, then they get the buff, at which point, yeah, you basically might as well forfeit. I know an all or nothing gamble seems kind of stupid, but it's better than having no chance to make a comeback, and it might allow for some extra macro strategy. After all, assuming the minigame takes place at 20 minutes like we established earlier, what else happens during that time? Baron spawns, so if they feel like they can afford to give you whatever reward that takes place, then they get a free Baron. Again, just a random idea I thought of. Number 3. Greater Defense Like I said in number 1, it's too easy to bleed out once you fall behind, because what little resources you have at your disposal crumble to pieces against an enemy team shot up with Baron buff or if they have Rift Herald, and there's actually a few things I think that can be changed to improve that. When I went on the wiki to do some research, I was actually surprised to find out that turrets get weaker the closer they are to the Nexus. That sounds kind of counterintuitive, I feel like your strongest line of defense should be closer to your weak point. People think Inhib and Nexus Towers fall apart in 2 seconds because everyone has more damage, and while that's part of it, it's also because those towers are straight up squishier. 
Take a look at this. The outer turret has 5000 health, 152 to 278 attack damage, and 40 armor and magic resist. Although this is greatly enhanced thanks to turret plating, which gives bonus armor and magic resist, and then even more bonus armor and magic resist if you take tower plates down in quick succession. The inner turrets have 3600 health, less than 75% of the outer turret's total HP. It has slightly more attack damage, armor, and magic resist, but considering how by the time you reach the tier 2 turrets, you likely have twice the turret DPS than before, it's nowhere near enough to mount any kind of defense. It gets even lower. Inhib turrets have 3300 health and 70 armor, and then the Nexus turrets have the same armor, but only 2700 health. I should also mention, those towers used to have the laser attack instead of regular turret shots, which were much more effective against super minions and tower dives, as those would do a ton of damage if you face tanked it for too long. They need to increase tower stats closer to Nexus because it's simply too easy for you to lose your entire base off of getting aced. I do acknowledge that Riot wants team fights to have heavy consequences, and conceptually, lower defenses can work in the defending team's favor as well. If the game were to somehow magically reach 40 minutes and death timers are 80 seconds long, if you score a clean 5 for 0 ace, you can make a single mad push to end the game even if you took 0 towers the entire time. But in my opinion, things like the cannon minion being able to attack from out of turret range or having access to up to 2 rift heralds in the game allows you to take so much of the enemy's base without the defending team being able to do anything. The severe lack of comeback opportunities is due in part to teams not being given enough defensive measures to hold the line long enough to fish for those opportunities. Number 4, Improved Band System Season 6 made a change to Champion Select to allow every player on either team to choose a single target to ban, so up to 10 champions can be banned at a time. Since then, we've had over 20 new champions I believe, and the total count is up to 157. There's a few problems with this. The most pressing issue is that there aren't enough bans relative to the number of champions in the game as of right now. I suppose you might argue that's a good thing because it wouldn't be healthy if players could ban whoever they don't want to play against, but the reality of it is champions have matchups that are either an unpleasant experience or straight up unwinnable if the opponent has even the slightest bit of competence. Another issue is that there's a high degree of overlap banning, where both teams ban the same champions, which can lower the total number of bans from 10 to 5, especially since everyone usually dislikes fighting whatever is destroying the meta in their respective roles, like Kane or Fiora. While this may lead to slightly longer champ selects, I feel like they should go back to ordered ban system, where each player bans champion one at a time. Kinda like how they do in pro play or tournament draft, but all 5 at once. That would at least maintain the total number of bans to 10. I don't think it's wise to give everyone 2 bans because 20 champions is a bit much, so a proper middle ground would be to ensure 10 unique bans. Nowadays you see too many drafts where both teams ban 3 of the same champions, now it's ridiculous. Number 5. More consumable items. Dota players, don't say anything, I know how one-use items are in Dota and they're pretty cool. League of Legends took away a lot of consumables from the game because they brought too much value for the amount of gold they cost. Right now, all we have are healing items, control wards, the three elixirs, and stopwatch to an extent. Part of me really wants to see consumable items that actually do things. For example, one item I thought would be cool to add is a tower shield. It costs X amounts of gold and would reinforce the tower for a set amount of time, causing it to take reduced damage from ranged attacks from champions and minions. You could purchase this item to give yourself a fighting chance against a Baron Siege, something like that. I'm aware item actives like Redemption or Everfrost are sort of League's equivalent of consumable items in other MOBAs, but things that could be purchased to alter the game state in a way that, when used correctly, could turn the tide of a game around. We shouldn't necessarily add a bunch of items that invalidate the functions or power of mythic or legendary items, but it would be cool to see consumables that influence the game outside of combat. For one, I think Stopwatch is a cool addition to the game. It's a cheap and one-use Sonya's Hourglass, which means anyone can build it, not just mages. In theory, we could add one-use versions of any item that players could use but don't want to commit to fully buying it. They can get a one-use Banshee's Veil or a one-use Quicksilver Sash. We already have Zoe who can pick up Mythic Actives, so it's not like the system isn't already built in place. Number 6, New Summoner Spells. Same rationale as consumable items, if you didn't watch my video on that, I talked about how the recent summoners like Teleport and Flash are always picked in pro play, is because they do something more than just make you stronger or the enemy weaker. Heal, Ignite, Exhaust, Barrier are all just combat advantage, and the only reason people take them is because there's nothing else to use. If we were to add other summoner spells that do more than just make you kill your opponent faster, it could allow for more interactive gameplay. If you want to learn more about that, I highly suggest you watch my summoner spell video as I listed a few examples there. One theoretical idea I didn't mention though was Gravity, a spell that lets you target an enemy champion and ground them for a few seconds, so if you're dealing with someone that places a big emphasis on mobility, Gravity could do a better job shutting them down than Exhaust. 
But yeah, I still think it would be cool to have things like jamming signal or blowback. Summoner spells that are situation dependent, but can be very useful in those situations, rather than everyone just taking ignite or exhaust because it lets them kill people more. Now I did get some comments in response to the original video saying that they actually liked how simple summoner spells were because it put more focus on the champions. But champions are becoming more and more complicated, objectives are becoming more complicated, items, runes, everything has become more complicated. So summoner spells have been feeling kind of antiquated for a while now. Number 7, a systematic reduction of healing, shielding, and the countermeasures to respond to that. Out of all the mechanics in the game, the ones that went a bit too far are healing and shielding. I made separate episodes on them, but the overall message remained the same. There's too much healing and shielding in the game, and that's why there's been a lot of changes in place to try to counteract that, such as Grievous Wounds and Shield Reduction. Healing has gone through the roof overall. There are tons of items and runes that give free sustain. Divine Sunderer, Gore Drinker, Eclipse, Immortal Shield Bow, Rift Maker, Ravenous Hydra, Redemption, Death's Dance, Bloodthirst, Hysteric Gauge, and lest we forget all the runes like Legend Bloodline, Second Wind, Conqueror, Fleet Footwork, Ravenous Hunter, it's become so widespread that even on champions who don't have any healing, they have ways to drain tank a whole bunch, like Yone. Shielding is also out of control. Immortal Shield Bow, Eclipse, Sterex again, Gargoyle Stoneplate, Locket, Mob Malmordius, and of course the built-in shields everyone seems to have. Akshan gets a shield on his passive for whatever reason, and same with Aphelios for his overheal shield. Not to mention all the various heal and shield power items that effectively double the health bar of every champion in the game. Yona W plus Immortal Shield Bow gives him like a 1000 HP shield. I miss the days when healing was exclusive only to champions whose theme revolved around it, like Dr. Mundo, Vladimir, and Zack. Or shields existed only on enchanters, tanks, and maybe very select champions. But now, everyone heals so much that Grievous Wounds has become obligatory, which is why Riot had to make a dedicated wounds item for every role. Chainsword, Putrefire, Morello, and Thornmail. Then there's Serpent's Fang, and during preseason we're gonna get the new Magic Pen item to deal with shields. There needs to be, like, a complete systematic reduction of healing and shielding in general, because at this point, champions that should be squishy are face tanking teamfights as if they were tanks. They did sort of do a healing nerf across the board early season 11, but it wasn't enough. We need to make healing and shielding actually matter and not be a commodity that's accessible to everyone. Number 8, a greater focus on buffs and not nerfs. This might sound contradictory to point number 7 since reduction means nerfing, but I'm mostly talking about champions. At first, prioritizing buffs sounds like it would incentivize power creep, which is why Riot has to focus on nerfs. But right now, we're in a balanced situation where the gap between the strongest and weakest champions is too wide. That's partly the reason why metas feature only 1, 2, or 3 champions being played 24-7. It's because they're so far above the rest that there's no reason to play anyone else. There are two ways you can approach this. Nerf the overpowered champion to where they're not at that level, or buff weaker champions to bridge the gap from the other end. But there's a difference between the two. Nerfing a champion has more downsides than buffing, because when you nerf something, not only does that champion in question become much less viable to play, but you pretty much ruin all the time and effort people put into learning that champion. In some cases, you gut them out of the game completely. However, if you buff champions, namely the ones that counter the super top tiers, those top tiers are still serviceable and will likely continue to be played, but now there are more options to counter them. Nerfing the top tier champion may not always make them more counterable unless you give them a significant drop in power, but again, that could break them entirely, whereas buffing other champions will still keep the relative strength of those top tiers, but now introduce possible counter matchups that they have to be aware of, if that makes sense. Doing both buffs and nerfs results in overcorrection more often than not. Number 9, a full server-wide MMR reset. This really only applies to high elo, so many of you may be scratching your heads as to why I'm asking for this. MMR stands for matchmaking rating, which is the true way to rank your overall standing on the ladder instead of your actual league rank like diamond, platinum, etc. For example, you're platinum 1 and you get into a game where there's a gold 4 player on the enemy team, but they have an 80% win rate. Their rank may be gold 4, but their MMR is probably around diamond 4. Anyways, every season your rank resets, but your MMR doesn't, meaning if you were diamond last season, you will most likely be placed in a game against other diamond level players, even if you're all currently platinum 4. What we need is the full server-wide MMR reset because there are too many players in Diamond, Master, and Grandmaster who quite honestly don't deserve to be there and only got there because of, say, back in the start of Season 10 when some players were getting plus 30 LP per win and only minus 3 LP per loss. You might be saying, well, maybe they're good enough to deserve it because they're still up there. That's not always true. Remember, the game is designed to get players to as close to 50% as possible, so as long as you hold a 50% win rate, you will usually stay where your MMR holds you at, and since high elo players will earn far more LP per win than they lose per loss, they'll keep earning that much until they return back to the original rank, even if they were to reset back to Platinum 1 during placements. 
To repeat, this only really applies to Diamond Plus, but it is becoming a bit of a problem. Too much ELO inflation happened in the past couple years. And finally at number 10, an actual godforsaken tutorial. League of Legends tutorial system is a joke. For a company and game as massive as League, it's almost embarrassing how little the built-in tutorials actually teach you. You can quite literally pay some random challenger player 100 bucks to make a laning phase for a beginner's guide or jungler for beginners, but there's nothing. Most players who actually get into League only manage to do so through a friend who usually teaches them the basics. If you try to learn this game by yourself, you're gonna be miserable. It teaches you nothing. Even the Pokemon tutorials teach you more than this game. I'm not saying we need to make a guide on all the super complex micro and macro strategies, but at least something better than what we have. The funny thing is, they actually did rework the tutorial so you no longer build Thornmail on Ash, but even that one sucks. We need a fully comprehensive library that teaches you all the basics of League of Legends, from laning phase, to objectives, to jungle, to items, etc. Okay, so that's all 10. I wasn't expecting this video to go as long as it did, my bad. Anyway, let me know if you agree with these 10 choices, or if you think I missed out on something that really should have been included as well, then let me know what your 10 things are in the comments. For now though, if you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you gave it a like, really helps out the channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord server if you haven't yet, and lastly check out my other discussion videos after this one. But until then, my throat is starting to hurt a lot, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.